Hello? Okay, we're gonna wait for people to come and we can start. Uh, so let's uh, let's go ahead and start. Um, I'm gonna post the attendance uh, attendance form. Okay, there we go. Uh, it should be in there. Okay, so today we're gonna be learning about linear regression. So um, linear regression, as you can see, is where we have some data and we're gonna try and predict the line that's the best fit for the data. So where is it used or what is it? So uh, well, I just explained. You know, you try to get the line of best fit. Um, so like you could use it for example to I don't know predict the motion the motion of a car or predict the amount of profits that you can make um, it's not actually that useful compared to the other ones that we're gonna learn because most of the data in real life is not linear um, you know the next one we're gonna learn is logistic regression so that one will be, be able to cover more uh, real life data but still not perfect we'll come up with you know we'll show you guys better models as we go on but this is an uh, important one that we can um, learn at the beginning. So how do we use linear regression? Uh, so again, it's just a line. So the basic equation for a line is that y equals mx plus b. Uh, y, so uh, we have x and y, and then m is the slope, rise over run, uh, and b is the y-intercept. OK, so that's what we're going to do is we're just going to find the slope, and we're going to find the intercept. and that should give us our that should give us our line, right? So we just had to figure out some kind of formula to get the m and the b. So here's the formula. So uh, instead of using m and b, we're going to use a and b. Uh, that's just you know uh, same thing though. Uh, so the y-intercept is pretty easy once you have the slope, right? Which is down here. Um, so let me go over these notations a little bit. So b is the y-intercept, y bar, so y bar, the bar means that it's the average of the data set. Uh, so the average of this data set, uh, y, so there's, okay, so there's going to be x data set and y data set. So the x data set is the input data and y data is the output data. So you're going to take in the x data and you're going to try and predict the y data. So you're going to, but to 
to actually get these numbers, you need to give it some training data. So that's data that we already know the answers to. So uh, that, that would be like if you're trying to predict, uh, I don't know, let's just say somebody's shoe size based on their height. Then you could give in the data of the person's height and you would uh, compare it to their shoe size and you would use that data. So the X would be the person's height and the Y would be the shoe size. Uh, so anyways, this is going to be the average of the data. That's what bar means. So the Y bar means the average of the output data. X bar is the average of the input data. So this is the formula for that. And that makes sense if you think about it, right? Y equals MX plus B or Y equals AX plus B. In this case, we're just solving the equation for B. So if you do the algebra, you just get this equation. Now this one is a bit more complicated. So here we're going to have the sum of the x uh, at, uh, of i, meaning that the ith uh, data, data point in the x data set. So we're going to go through every single data point in the x and y data sets, and they should be the same length. So uh, i can remain the same here. So, And we're going to take the difference between that and the mean, and we do that for x and y, multiply them together. We get the sum of that for the numerator. For the denominator, we're just going to do that for the x, and we're going to square it. So once you square it, you don't get a positive or negative. You're just going to get positive because um, oh, that's what happens when you square things. OK, so that's all we have for the presentation. Uh, now today, instead of doing a shell, I'm actually going to go ahead and do, um, I'm going to do it in a text uh, in a file. So that's just so that way it's a. Uh, you know, you guys can practice like this as well. So uh, I'm just going to make a new directory. We'll call it linear regression. OK, then I'm going to cd into that directory. OK, this is an empty directory. Um, and so now we're going to create a new file. Uh, we'll call it linear regression. So I'll say uh, Vim is my favorite editor. Whatever you want to use, you can use it. Um, uh, PyCharm is probably the most powerful, specifically for Python development, uh, if you want to learn that. But it's a pretty powerful one. You probably want to take some time. Vim is also has a steep learning curve, um, but it's also very powerful. So OK, we're going to create a file called linear regression.py. OK, so there we go. Uh, and actually, uh, OK, sorry. OK, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and we don't need this file initial thing. OK, uh, can you guys see this? OK. I think you guys can. OK, so first thing we're going to do is import numpy as np. Uh, and we're also going to need matplotlib for this. Sorry. OK. OK, there we go. OK. So uh, we're not going to use actual data for this one. We're going to use. Um, we're going to use randomly generated data from NumPy. But if you want to practice, you guys can also go ahead and try and find real data. You guys can also use pandas if you find a CSV file, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, I see that there's a new person that's joined. I'm going to post the attendance form again. Uh, OK. So anyway, so first, let's generate the x data, right? So x data is what we're going to put in, right? So here, we can just create a range 50. So we're just going to get integers from 0 to 49, right? Uh, next, we're going to create our y data. So that's going to be, we can say, sorry. Uh, uh, we can get np dot, and then, OK, so you can do np dot random dot rand int. We're going to go 50 data points from 1 to 50. OK, now this here, you wouldn't get any correlation, right? Because it's just random data. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to do a cumulative sum. And what that's going to result in, so I'll explain it in a second. So OK, there we go. So cumulative sum. So uh, what that means is that it's going to take the sum as it goes along. So like if you have like, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Uh, like let's just say this x data, it's going to be like one zero one two three four. So what it'll do is, uh, here, let me write this here. So comments in Python are the pound sign, by the way. So I'll have x is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on, right? Well, if I do uh, cumulative sum of x, that's going to be, so this first one is 0. 
Next one is going to be zero plus one, so that's one. Next one is going to be uh, next one is going to be uh, well, the, uh, in this case, so zero and then zero plus one, and then it's going to be two, but plus one plus zero, so it's going to be uh, three. Next one is going to be three plus two plus one plus zero, so it's going to be six. And then next one is going to be the same thing, uh, but you add four, so it'll be ten, and so on, right? So that's the cumulative sum. So basically, what it'll do is it'll take this random data, uh, and the rate of change will still be random, but it'll be somewhat linear. So that way we get, you know, uh, some correlation at least, rather than just trying to find something out, some correlation out of nothing. So now let's go ahead and plot this as a scatter plot. We'll plot x and y, and also let's just go ahead and create comment so we know what we're gonna do so we're gonna create the data here we're gonna plot the data okay okay so now we're gonna show this now on my vim config I have a, a key mining set to run the thing for me but um, I'm gonna show you how to run it from the command line so I'm gonna write and quit out of this um, so now you can see I have this linear regression.py right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to run Python, and then you just type in the name of the file. And there we go. So we get our graph right here. So this is the cumulative sum of random random data from um, is it, I think 1 to 50, right? So yeah. Uh, we got our graph right there. Uh, OK, so let's continue. Uh, OK, there we go. OK. There we go. So now that we got that, I'm going to, OK, so now let's actually do the linear regression. Uh, so the formula that we saw earlier, right? So first, or you remember that we had to calculate the, we had to calculate the slope before we get the intercept, right? That was part of the formula. So let's, let's calculate the slope. OK. So let's. We're going to calculate the numerator and then the denominator, and then we'll finally assign that to the variable, and we'll call it a. Because that way we can play with the um, thing. So I'll explain what I'm doing in a second. So okay. So here, we're, uh, if you remember back to when we were doing the Python lessons, uh, we covered the zip command, uh, not the command, the function. Um, so what the zip function does is it'll take two uh, iterables, in this case our numpy arrays, and it is it's gonna zip them together so that way they will be in tuples. So it'll basically form a list of tuples of the data sets. So then we can uh, go ahead and uh, get these arguments out of the tuples. So it'll create tuples of x and the y. So right here we're gonna get the x i and y of i. Uh, if you remember in our formula we had x of i and y of i for iterating through the through the uh, through the data sets. Okay. Uh, and remember, in Python, indentation is how you denote, uh, I guess, the blocks of code. So uh, you know you want to keep your indentations constant. Um, okay. So we're gonna do uh, numerator. We're gonna add the x i minus x dot mean, right? So remember it was, um, and then we're gonna multiply this to y i minus y i minus y dot okay. so if you remember that part of the formula the numerator it was the difference in these uh, x and the x mean and the y uh, and the y mean so and then the product of those two so we're gonna continue and so that, that we're just gonna follow the exact same formula so then now for the denominator we're just gonna add the x i minus x dot mean and we're gonna square this okay there we go. Okay. So now A is going to be numerator over the denominator. Okay. So now we just have to calculate the intercept. Okay. So you remember the formula was y mean minus uh, A times the x mean. Okay. So now we should have uh, our slope and our intercept, right? So uh, now let's go ahead and print our values. Okay, so we're gonna print. Okay, so our slope is gonna be. Uh, actually, you know, I'll just use the f string. 
Uh, okay, our slope is oops, okay. slope is a, and our uh, intercept is b. Okay, there we go. Okay, uh, now last thing we have to put in, or, uh, last thing we want to do is just show plot of this. So now we can plot line. Okay. Let me just scroll down a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna do plt dot scatter x y plt dot plot uh, x and three times x plus b. Okay, so if you remember numpy arrays, we can directly apply the um, arithmetic uh, the arithmetic to them. So here we're gonna plot, plot x and then we're gonna plot. Uh, a times x plus b. So this will take every single element in x, multiply by a, and add b. Uh, this is just a you know quick way to plot it. Um, not the best way, but it works. Okay. Uh, lastly, we just have to show the plot. So okay, I'm just gonna run it using my key binding. So okay, there you go. You can see right here it creates the line of best fit, um, and it worked pretty well. Um, I mean, again, it is just kind of randomly generated data, and we did the cumulative sum, so it does have a pretty sh pretty strong correlation. But okay, and then you can see right here, uh, it should have given us the typical. Okay, uh, which is, there we go, right here. So our slope is about twenty-seven, and our intercept is about nine. So uh, that's how we do. Okay, so that's how you do linear regression by from scratch but oftentimes you just want to be able to have somebody else's algorithm to it so uh, we can do sklearn.linear model uh, import linear regression uh, so the, uh, um, I should have probably okay so this is sklearn this is uh, scikit-learn it's another module um, we'll use it for several of the models uh, linear regression is one of them um, okay so to install it, you want to do pip install scikit learn. And I already have it installed, but okay. So now uh, we have this installed. So from the linear module class, we have the, sorry, from that module, we have this class. Okay. So I'm going to go to the end of the file. And so now we're going to go ahead and um, do the same thing, but this time we're going to use linear regression. So we're going to create a model. Uh, it's going to be a linear regression model. Uh, we don't need any arguments for this one. So uh, now we're going to train the data. So uh, we'll. S but first, we have to kind of pre-process the data a little bit. So uh, for Scikit-Learn, it likes it whenever it has. Uh, shoot, okay. Whenever it has, it's it's two-dimensional. So it wants it to be two-dimensional. That way, if you have multiple features, they'll all be there. So. Uh, in this case, we only have one feature, so we just have the one feature right here, and then it creates however many, uh, however many columns it needs to create, uh, which is with the minus one flag. So uh, then y will again reshape it to one minus one. Okay. So again, here we're just you know, pre-processing the data, um, and so specifically we're going to turn it. Um, so we just say turn into 2D arrays to make sklearn happy because <laughs> um, that's pretty much what we're doing. Okay, so now we'll actually train the model. So we'll say model dot fit and we're going to give it x and y. Okay, so now model should be able to now the after this the model is going to look at the data. It's going to do these calculations and it's going to be able to find the now this algorithm is going to be a bit more, um, it's going to be uh, much more, um, it's, it's much more advanced, so it's going to fit the line perfectly. It's not even really a line, it's uh, kind of fitting to individual data sets, data, data points, and uh, I'll show you in a second. So, uh, yeah, I have to reshape this, so I have to flatten this basically, so... Uh, okay. And, and we'll reshape this to minus one as well to flatten it. So, 
Uh, again, here we reshaped it to one minus one. That basically creates one row and however many columns it needs. Here what we did was we just turned it into however many columns, I guess you could say. But basically a linear, it's gonna turn it into a linear data set, right? So everything is in one single row. Uh, and it's only one dimensional. That, that's just so that way matplotlib, that's basically to make matplotlib happy. So here we're making scikit-learn happy, here we're making matplotlib happy. Okay, so now we'll, we'll show the data. So, okay, let me run this. Okay, so this is our uh, one that we did by scratch. And as you can see, okay, this is the one from scikit-learn. So you can see that it's actually going to like every single data point and it's gonna go through each individual data point and it's gonna try and um, match the data points. Now, this is actually not a good thing because uh, this is something called overfitting in machine learning. So what this means is that your data or your model is too close to these points. So if we try to give it any other, if we try to give it any other points like from arbitrary, so let's just say, we're going for the um, example with the height to shoe correlation, right? Height to shoe size. So right here, this would be our, our height and this would be our shoe size, right? Um, then basically what this model is doing is it's just gonna memorize whatever our data set is. So if we try to put in some new data point, it'll give us some value, but it'll give us a value based on whatever it's memorized so far. And that doesn't create a good model because it's not looking at the patterns, it's just memorizing the thing altogether. So uh, that's called overfitting. There's also underfitting where it would be like, you know, it's basically not a good representation of the model at all. So like if this is some kind of function that's like logarithmic, where it's going like this, and then we have like some type of linear model that's gonna be underfitted, right? Because it's not a accurate representation of the of the data, but in the other sense, in that it's not fitting well enough to the data points. In this case, it's fitting too well to the data points. Um, so you can see basically there's like just a line to every single one of the uh, pieces of data, and so it's not it's it's just not a good model for predicting anything outside of this data set. Um, it's not really predicting anything. So yeah, that's basically all we have. Um, do you guys have any questions? Okay, no questions. So, uh, this lesson was pretty short. Um, I suspect that maybe the next one might also be relatively short. Uh, so next one is going to be linear regression. Sorry, logistic regression. This is linear regression. Uh, and then after that, we're going to do KNNs, SVMs, and so on. So uh, it, this one's probably the most boring out of all of them. Um, it should be getting more interesting. Um, next one is going to be a little more interesting. Not not the really exciting ones, but it'll be a little bit. It'll be more interesting than this. Uh, KNNs are uh, they're kind of more. Like they're, they're more, uh, I guess, brute force kind of. Uh, like it takes more computing power, uh, and it's not as efficient of a method. Um, then I think we'll do SVMs. SVMs are actually very powerful, uh, and like even comparable to neural networks. And then after that, I think we're doing neural networks. Um, there might be another lesson in between. K-means clustering. That's a different type of method, so we'll learn that. So, anyways, uh, hope you guys had fun learning this uh, uh, and you know uh, hope you have fun on the rest of the lessons uh, have a nice day bye